Good evening. Welcome to the School District of the City of Dearborn regular board meeting Monday, February 13th. We're getting started at 7.05 p.m. I want to let everyone in our audience know that we have an interpreter president present, so if you need any interpretive services, please let us know. You can come over to this side of the room. Can I please have a roll call? Trustee Barry? Here. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Here. Trustee McDonald? Here. Trustee Mosip? Here. Trustee Petrikoff? Here. Trustee Watts here, President Thorpe? Here. Next item. Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Ms. Eliza Hamoud from Whitmore Bowles Principal will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well done. Good job. Olive, thank you very much. Isla, thank you. Brody, thank you. You guys have fun with the bubble wrap, too. <laughs> Next item, please. Superintendent's update. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. I just wanted to start with a moment of silence, um, recognizing the tragedy that's happened overseas uh, with the victims in Syria and Turkey. Our thoughts and prayers are with those and their families. So if we could take a moment of silence right now, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. So I'll move along. Um, agenda items, I have retirements as I do every month. Zara Ajami, 27 years of service. Judy Byrne, over three years of service. Eileen Kromitz, 28 years of service. Cheryl Douglas, over 24 years of service. Catherine Greco, 12 years of service. Lisa Meyer, 35 years of service. Marianne Charest, over 26 years of service. Anthony Vader, 19 years of service. Antoinetta Ventura, 24 years of service. Let's uh, show their appreciation and congratulate them. I also want to just mention, it's on the agenda for tonight, is congratulate the January graduates 2023. Uh, moving along, I'm going to pull up uh, a couple of principals who are here that were appointed at the meeting last month. I want to first ask Erin McInvale, the new principal at Hague, to come up. Uh, if we could uh, congratulate her now, that'd be great since she's here. Good evening, President Thorpe, trustees, and Dr. Maleko. I wanted to join this me the meeting this evening to express my gratitude in my official appointment as principal of Hague Elementary. I am a proud product of Dearborn Public Schools and am honored to be raising my family in the same community and watching them grow and thrive in our school system. It's because of my family and their unwavering support that I am able to stand in front of you here today. While my journey with Dearborn Schools started as a student, it continued as an educator when Ms. Ali Bazzi hired me as a language arts and math teacher at Woodworth Middle School. A special thank you to Ms. Ali Bazzi for seeing and supporting my potential all those years ago. My time at Woodworth was full of amazing experiences <coughs> and provided opportunities to learn from some of the best teachers that I have ever worked with. I have to extend a heartfelt thank you to the Woodworth staff and leadership. They truly helped shape me as an educator. After five years at Woodworth, my career path and personal goals for growth led me in the direction of leadership. Our district's administrative internship opportunity supported this growth and connected me with several mentors. Mrs. Shannon Peterson, in particular, was an integral part of not only my professional, but personal growth as well. She has supported me in every sense of the word. 
As I step into this next chapter, I can't help but think how grateful I am for the support of my many mentors along the way. Under the support of our executive director, Ms. Fatmi Faraj, as well as Dr. Maleko and members of executive cabinet, Hague quickly felt like home to me. The Hague staff, students, and community have welcomed me so graciously and made the transition as Hague's new principal overwhelmingly positive. I am honored to work alongside passionate, dedicated, and supportive teachers and staff in the building each and every day, and I could not be prouder to be part of their team. Thank you for the opportunity to continue to serve the Hague community. Our future is bright, and I know that we will continue to accomplish great things together. Thank you. Next, we'll call LSR Hamoud back up to the podium and congratulate her, the new principal at Whitmore Bulls Elementary, approved last month. Good evening, Board of Trustees and Dr. Maleko. I'm honored to accept this position as principal of Whitmore Bulls Elementary. I would like to humbly give thanks to the people who matter to me most, to my mother, and my sisters, thank you for always being there for me. To my sisters by choice, thank you for always supporting me. And lastly, to my husband, for always being my biggest supporter and standing by my side. You are my partner in this crazy thing we call life. It's certainly not easy to raise four kids, one with special needs, but they are our biggest blessing it's sometimes hard to remember that. I'm excited and honored to serve our community in this new role as Whitmore Bulls principal. And I know it's early, but I do have a request. Whitmore Bulls is one of the first things as principals. I started a social media platform. And I would be honored if Dr. Maleko would have a picture with me and it could be our first post. <laughs> he sure. never turns down a picture. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what I wanted to hear. Right now? Is that okay? Sure. You got your sign? I don't. Oh, it's back. Steve's got one. I was hoping you had the sign. Yeah. We what? have both. <laughs> Someone will have my back if I don't. Okay. Yes, I do. you want me? All right, I'll move along on my commentary. Uh, so I want to do an update. Um, I think it's very important for us to be involved with our associations. I know the board's involved with the MASB School Board Association. Um, in fact, we have you know national conference that you go to, the state conference. I'm heavily involved in the superintendent association, and I think and the board is aware I'll be the president of the association effective July 1. I think it gives us extra um, influence, gives us a, an extra uh, ability to advocate for students and staff in Dearborn by being involved. I know we have others that are involved, like Mr. Wall and the MSBO business, and we have, for example, Ms. Elkadri and others that are involved in the secondary school principals, and we've actually had some of those individuals come to our um, meetings with central office. So I think it's very important. It also gives us extra influence when we're working in Lansing to try to influence legislation that is proactive to benefit our students. So at the conference that I was at a few weeks ago, um, a few of the important topics I just want to highlight. One includes Dr. Rice, the state superintendent, call for an end to the A to F um, accountability. There's two systems. One's the index, and it was passed in a lame duck um, legislature just before the governor took over. So that's one thing we're hearing, that they really need to revamp the accountability system because of these two competing systems. Uh, another one that was on educator shortage and talent recruitment. And I know Ms. Bazzi, my, I was invited to a meeting with Dr. Rice and a few others, and I brought in Ms. Bazzi from HR, and we talked about uh, some ideas. Uh, there is a law right now, for example, that we have retirees that, that can be off. If they're off for nine months, they can come back. We're asking to shorten that because of the staff shortage that's out there. Uh, there's also grow your own funding, and our district has applied for it, but the county ISDs have. So we're really feeling it at the state level. So those are some of the topics. We have teacher leadership, um, literacy, evaluation. Um, we did have a lot of sessions on um, equity and inclusion and uh, how to support the LGBTQ 
plus community um, when we were at the conference, um, and those are very valuable. Um, so, uh, oh, and at preschool was another one that we also talked about. And then we did hear of the governor's budget that came out, which is really positive. Um, if you saw now, obviously there'll be a negotiation, um, but this is, um, you know, we do have a, a narrow, narrow majority, but the Democrats have the state, uh, the Senate and the House, which is the first time in like 40 years. So obviously she's of the same party. So we would hope that they will work together to get that budget passed. But we do see it as positive. If you saw it, increases in per pupil funding, special ed, uh, ELL, English language learners, uh, ret retention. So the state has recognized we need for recruitment and the teacher shortage. Um, if you saw by 2027, the objective is to have preschool for all. Um, and so that was, I believe, a real positive. We have some things in the budget and I'm just highlighting like student wellness, which includes both safety uh, mechanisms along with um, you know, mental health supports. And I know Mr. Saley does a great job always applying for those grants that are available. Um, she's also calling for, if you saw her state of the state, in her budget for extracurricular after school. So we'll, we'll get more information on that. But of course we would apply if those programs are available. Um, she's got some but money in there that is important, the, the retirement system to make sure because our district does have to contribute. And then there is this, uh, and I don't know where it's gonna go, but she is for the first time a proposal on some infrastructure because right now the only way we get funding is from you know a local taxpayer bond for infrastructure or other methods. So that was a positive. I would also mention that um, on the day when the students were wanted to know um, that we were closed for a snow day uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, myself, Mr. Wall, and Mr. Mussin drove up to Lansing. It was the date of the State of the State Address, and we met with multiple legislatures to advocate for students. I think there wasn't a lot of superintendents because of the weather, but we so we had a lot of face time with both Republicans and Democrats talking about education, advocating for security, for literacy, for summer programs. That's one thing, and I've been in conversation with Senator Santana. Um, I think everyone's aware we had the largest summer program the last two years, but we no longer have that funding because we don't have that federal dollar. So there is some conversation as to how we can increase that. So I think those things are very important um, and we'll continue to advocate. I will continue to advocate, and I do have meetings that are gonna be set up with individual uh, local legislatures, but I'd encourage anyone that's talking to their legislatures to you know talk about the priorities and you know public education to me is a top priority. I, I'm gonna move along. I want to recognize the contributions. It is Black History Month, February. We always send out different lessons. I know from Dr. Groover um, in materials. We also have our council that does that MLK Junior Day in, in January, but wanted to just recognize the contributions of African Americans to the United States and, and celebrate uh, Black History Month. So we've presented and we've had it on here, the fielding study that came at the last meeting. And so what's happened since the last time is we've had uh, town halls, but uh, just to review and remind everyone, we've had 29 focus groups that's happened in the fall. Um, there, was a prox there was parents, administrators, teachers, students, board members, council members, city council members. There was about 200 students that were engaged in these. Um, we then uh, looked to the town halls with um, when we, when we total up the town halls and the focus groups, there was about 462 participants total between all of them. Um, and then we did have a survey that also went out from fielding with 1,830 people took the survey. Our team had a debrief meeting with them before they were flying back to their location uh, last week. And so more to come on that um, and more information will be brought forward to the board. Um, I wanted to mention too, I'm gonna to keep going. Um, I wanted to thank uh, Kathy Martin, the DFT president. We had a great first meeting last week and appreciate, we look forward to uh, building that relationship for the benefit of you know, your, the staff and the union members and our students. So thank you for that positive meeting. And I wanna to mention too that we are really leading the way when, it, when you hear of um, diversity, equity and inclusion, okay? We still have work to do but we have take on, taken on, I am personally in training um, every month through the MASA, which is the superintendent association that I'll be president of. I have a team that goes with me. Uh, that is one aspect. We're also, um, and we have several teachers in that. We have administrators and, and they're very positive meetings. Uh, we also um, hired through that, um, Ms. Serini, who's a DEI coach. So we have a position dedicated for that. 
and we've been hearing real positive feedback of what she's doing in buildings. We also sent several individuals to get certified as DEI, diversity, equity, inclusion, I'm gonna use the acronym, trainers. And we did contract with uh, Mrs. Zanelle Brown, who actually comes out of the court system, to give us the, uh, and she does strategic planning with DEI. So we've been meeting with her as well. And so what we see a great opportunity, because we've done a lot of training over the last eight years since I've been superintendent with administrators, but we didn't have this far encompassing plan within the buildings amongst the students and staff. So we now have that. Um, and we're, we're, what we're looking to do is this year, the strategic plan is up for renewal. So what we wanna do is bring that DEI plan into the strategic plan that we'll have starting in, I believe, April. And we all know Ms. Farage leads that process. Mr. Saley is leading the team on the DEI and I appreciate him and all those who are involved with that. So I just wanted to um, you know, mention that and I see that as a real positive, uh, but there will be uh, more to come on that area. Thank you. Any questions for the superintendent, Trustee McDonald? Um, yeah, the possibility of having universal uh, child care by 2027 is amazing. But I just want to make sure that if that is the case, that's going to come pretty quickly. And I would want to make sure that we're prepared for the influx of students and where we would put them in. Sure. And that will be a challenge, our infrastructure with classroom space. Absolutely. Any idea how many students that could possibly be? I don't have a number right now, but I could get back to you. Okay. Trustee Barry? Yes, sir. Dr. Maliko, uh, I have a copy of an email here in front of me from uh, January 4th, 2022, from uh, David Mustanen. It says, hello all. At the board meeting in January, we always, we always get a group photo of the board. This photo goes out to the press release. We take this photo right after the organizational meeting. I guess my question is, is there a reason why we didn't do that this year? Um, I. No, I don't know. I mean, we could get that done, David. We could do the phone. I'm not looking to get it done. I'm yeah. just saying, is there a reason I, why we didn't do it? I'd have to get back to you. Yeah. Not no, not no, no. Oh, What's that? that's what. Not all the board members were oh. present, and we'd like to have a group shot of everybody. Okay, I, I said the date. I'm, I'm talking to Dr. Maleko. I did say the date was January 4th, which was a week before the organizational meeting. And I did repeat the word always. So, and we didn't hear from one of our trustees that there's a good chance that she wasn't gonna be able to make it to the meeting until that Saturday, that weekend before. And matter of fact, it wasn't like final answer for that day. So the fact that we didn't get a notice, I mean, I got dressed up and put my best tie on that day, but we didn't take that. I mean, is there any place Yeah, I have to get back to you. I don't know. I don't are you just gonna let me assume what it was or you wanna? No, again, I'll get back to you once I talk to my team. Well, that's, I mean, no. You mean you you don't make those mistakes. You and your communication director don't make these mistakes. So I mean, uh, I had that uh, that night. I had that thought in my mind: what's going on here? And it was also presented to me by other people. So, sure, no problem. We'll get back to you. Well, we're here. Why we need to? Get I, back I don't here? have that information sure. right now. I need to get back to you. Trusty Barry, there's yes. always a chance that something's forgotten. So, if they need time to to review it. Let's give them time. Okay. Okay. It says always, but okay. Then the other question I have is that uh, regarding compliance officers, I run into employees, you know, maybe a teacher grabbing a coffee or maybe a custodian. Sometimes they start talking about alleged sensitive issues. Now I always say, I guess if you're not comfortable talking to the superintendent or your building administrator, is always an opportunity to talk to the compliance officer. If there's a complaint or a grievance or there's an issue. And I've been seeing a lot of issues lately being reported to the state. So we might want to get the word out where, you know, because I went on the website earlier and it was very difficult for me to find out where compliance officers are. Do you think that would be something that we'd want to have as an agenda item, like a presentation? I, whatever we can do to educate <coughs> our teachers, mostly our teachers, our teachers, all of our staff members, that yes, if there is something you feel is not going right in your building, and you don't feel talk, you know, feel safe talking to your administrator or are you superintendent that you have somebody you can go to. 
Yeah, we need to we need to get that information out there. I think that could be a future agenda item then. That's fine with me. Thank you. Any additional questions for the superintendent before we move to the next item? Trustee Moza. Question about the town hall meeting attendees. Um, Dr. Maleko, you mentioned 462 total. Is that for the four sessions that we had? No. The four ton? That's between the focus groups and the town halls. And how many did we have for just the town halls? Um, second here. Because I, I was at the Dearborn High School. We did not have a huge number uh, attend the town halls. Uh, we had participation of the four was 75, and then 340, or between what I'm being told is between 50 to 75, and then 340 view, uh, views on the town hall. And Trustee Mosel, like you, I was at Dearborn High, and I'd say half of, and Trustee Barry, half the attendees were uh, members of the uh, administ well, administrators, or district employees. Uh, with Fords and I'd say maybe, I don't know if there was a dozen community members when I was attending that one. And we did advertise this everywhere. We pumped it on us. We put it in the local papers. We tried to promote it as much as we could through, so. Yeah, I think with the amount of information and, and advertising for it, the numbers were very, very small uh, compared to what I would expect in a sure. traditional town hall meeting. Yeah. So what, what is the recourse for that to get more feedback from the community because the information that was presented in the town hall meetings were very important and to capture feedback is also as important. I know there'll be more process to move forward. I can't answer that right now because some of it is being worked out through the group that we'll meet with. Um, but again, they did do the survey as well and we continue to want feedback. I believe it was, you know, they can, and I can't recall, David, is it still available on the website too where they can submit or is that open still or no? Not, okay, so, but we will continue to talk to them as to how we can continue to get feedback as we go through the process. I think some of them too, um, were kind of like looking for the plan, like what I heard too in the town halls was, you know, have you come up with, the, well, we, we aren't there yet and they wanted to give feedback on possible plans. We didn't come to that point yet. Did, did, by chance, did you talk with Fielding or did anyone talk with Fielding about um, like a recap or a wrap up uh, for um, the town halls and what the next steps would be in terms of trying to increase participation. Yeah, I'm going to see if Mr. Wall is he here. Can you you guys had the meeting with them? Thank you. While Mr. Wall's coming up, a quick question in that vein: um, <coughs> Do we have information from the fielding study? of like a synopsis or the information that they provided to the board in an easy way to access through the website? That's a great question <laughs> because we actually have our closeout meeting. I specifically asked them for an interim report to kind of give a total summary of what they have done to date and with all the input that, that they have received. And that was one of the issues that came out of that meeting. The second one is that they do believe that we still will need additional time for either town halls or some other way to to again and get additional feedback, if not information from the interim report also. Okay. So those are the two things that kind of came out of that meeting. Thank you very much. Anything else? Next item, please. Recognition and acknowledgements, gavel presentation. Okay. So we traditionally would have done this at the last meeting, but I know that um, uh, then President McDonald was unable to attend. And so um, I would like to make a few comments and then uh, we do have our gavel here. Um, I want to thank uh, Trustee McDonald for um, her year of service as president. Uh, I would tell you that it was definitely a tough year. It was probably, I can just be honest too, it was probably the toughest year for me as superintendent. We would think you know, we came out of coming out of COVID. We were looking forward to going into the, into the 2022. But just to remind everyone, January started and we were dealing with Omicron and we had major shortages and there were considerations as to, uh, you know, what was going on that first month. Um, we had to make some important decisions about the bond, which then eventually led to the, the fielding study. We had a lot of sensitive situations um, that occurred. Um, 
and the the relationship between the superintendent and the board president is multiple. We did beat the record, Jim, that year you were with phone calls in one day. Um, there were many, many hours spent on the phone on the weekends or in the evening uh, getting ready for board meetings, sensitive situations and issues. And so I appreciate the great communication, Roxanne, and your leadership, your uh, great leadership, outstanding leadership, um, because that was very important to me. And, and we had that throughout the year. And I thank you for that. Despite some of the challenges, we had the record number of people at a board meeting um, as well. And um, so I want to thank you for um, keeping me informed of those issues and uh, just thank you for your service and appreciate it. If we could recognize the trustee right now. Next item. Commendations. <clears throat> Good evening. My name is Adam Owada from Fortson High School. I'm a senior. And my name is Leanne Sanan and I'm a junior. We're here to read the commendations from our Dearborn Public Schools. We're gonna begin with high schools. Uh, Commendations of students Arias Williams from Dearborn High and Shayna Duncan from Etzel Ford. Both students appeared on the January 9th America's Got Talent with the Detroit Youth Choir. Both also performed with the choirs at their respective high schools. Can we have a round of applause for them? <laughs> Commendations to the 18 students from Dearborn High who participated in the Regional Health Occupations Students of America competition in January and will be moving on to in-state competition. The HOSA advisor is Rania Bezi Hajazi. The winners include second place winners, ninth grade Miriam Abdul Sater for nutrition and ninth grade Medina Faraj for dental science. Third place winners include one of two parliamentary procedure teams from the school including 12th grader Ali Al Ghul, 11th graders Adam Hamoud and Sajid Nami, and 10th graders Raina Al Drubi, Jaid Al Hanawi and Mohammed Sabra. Fourth place winners include the parliamentary procedure team, all 10th graders, Ali Abdel Hafez, Ahmed Al Qadri, Farah Al Zagani, Dana Shamis, Bassan Al Zain, and Amen Fekri. Other results include ninth, grade, ninth grader Fatima Reza, finishing sixth place for healthy lifestyle. 10th grader Mohammed Soub, finishing sixth place for prepared speaking. 10th grader Mohammed Zarik, finishing seventh place for prepared speaking. And 12th grader Naveen Soub, finishing in eighth place for dental terminology. Can we again have a round of applause for these students? <laughs> Next, we have commendations of Fortune teacher, Iman Nora, who is helping spearhead the effort to get a wheelchair accessible van for a student who graduated in January and would like to attend college. A GoFundMe was created and a student story was featured on CBS News in Detroit. The family has already received $26,000 in donations toward the $30,000 goal. Accommodations to Etzel Ford High Band and Orchestra, students who performed at District 12 solo and assemble in January in Livonia. 11 students earned superior ratings and were invited to perform at State Solo and Assemble. These students include Olivia Blazak, Victor Bizak, Ryan Helka, Trinity Jakes, Sterling Dallier, Lucien Shockey, Lily Hart, Lauren Skidmore, Greg Anderson, Renee Harden, and Ella K. Jaller. Round of applause again, please. Commendations to Jeff Conway, Bill Gaida, and Shane Myers for assisting with the Beaumont Student Heart Check Program held at the Dearborn High on Saturday, February 4th. Hundreds of students attended the free event to check for potential heart issues that would not be found in a routine sports physical. A Dearborn student, Carl Wolowski, was a 20,000 student to receive a free heart check through the Beaumont program. Commendations to Dearborn High vocal music students who perform at the MSBMS Solo and Assemble Festival on February 4th at Livonia Stevenson High School. DHS participated in eight events and all the performers ate a first division rating, the highest score. The seven successful soloists included Julius Owens, Charlotte Karub, Maya Whitworth, Elena Cassidy, Savannah Caput, Alisa Gatlas, and Adam Macklin. The successful ex assemble included Miriam Bays, 
Alisa Gaelas, Elena Cassidy, and Abir Saad. The students can be heard at the DHS Festival concert on February 23rd at 7 p.m. Hope you guys are all there. <laughs> And now we're on to middle school. Commendations to Stout and Bryant Middle School students who participated in their school math counts club. Both competed in the 2023 Michigan Society of Professional Engineer Math Counts competition that took place at Woodhaven Community Center on February 2nd. The competition was a long day event of students entering rounds of time math problem solving questions. This is the first year Stout participated and they were pleased to advance to the second round. Congratulations to Bryant students Leo Razdevich, sixth grade Emily Montiers, and seventh grade who, who qualified to onto state competition. From Stout, seventh grader Ibrahim Al Saidi placed in the top 25. Stout's team advisor is Ms. Najat Bazi, and Bryant is Ms. Kim Makowski. Commendations to the virtual K-12 school media specialist and long-term substitute student Regal for her support of students and colleagues. On more than one occasion, Ms. Regal has gone above and beyond to perform her job opportunities and take on extra assignments to ensure classroom instruction was not interrupted. Her dedication is pa and passion is evident in all that she does. Can I get a round of applause? <laughs> now on to elementary school. Commendations to Miller Elementary Art Teacher Sharon Velasco. She was named the Detroit Red Rings Teacher of the Month for January. Commendations to Riyem al Hajiz for creating the winning t-shirt design for this year's Walk and Roll Challenge. Riem is a third grader at Henry Ford Elementary. Commendation to Nowland Principal Josh Tynan for being selected at the 2023 AERA SIG 93 Invisible College. His presentation is titled, Sustaining Healthy School Cultures Through Staff and Administrative Support. Nowland has maintained a commitment to educating the whole child by providing students with embedded nutrition curriculum, a purposeful and targeted brain breaks, working outdoor garden, working indoor aqua sprouts garden, garden club, yoga mindfulness training, weekly healthy home activity and recipes posted on blog and staff professional development. Commendations to Ms. Keebler's third grade class at Howe School. The students published a book called Mrs. Keebler's Class of Amazing Animals. The students researched animals and wrote reports and art teacher Nadia Humayyid taught the students how to use the grid method to draw realistic pictures of their animals to include in the book. Can we get a round of applause? Anything else? Don't go anywhere. <laughs> any trustees have any questions for our students? I just have a comment. I know you guys were nervous coming up here, but you did so well that I think we should have you guys. Thank you so much. Yes, you guys did very, very well, so they were Thank nervous. You. Yes. <laughs> they were definitely getting a round of applause. So a couple of questions. Adam, you mentioned that you're a senior. Yes. So what, what are you thinking for next year? What's uh, it look like? I'm still waiting on my college decisions, uh, but hopefully something in the medical field where okay. that lies, whatever school, I'm All right. pursue something in that. And both of you are from Fordson, correct? Yes. Is there anyone that you'd want to give a shout out to? Any staff member that's done a great job helping you? Any clubs that have been very supportive? This is your chance. Um, Interact Club has been very, very supportive to the school. Um, like I said, um, when we give accommodations to um, Ms. Nora and Ms. Ayub who run the, the club. They've donated so much money. They've helped the special education program so much. And along with that, Ms. Alcadre, our principal, she's been amazing in everything that we do. Uh, I would like to thank Ms. Shami, my teacher. She's been helping me out through the entire What subject? <laughs> what subject? Language arts. Language arts. She's been helping me throughout she's the entire amazing. process of applying for colleges, overlooking my essays just doing all the stuff in between. And uh, a club I'd like to shout out is my student advisory. I'm the president at Fortson High School, and I would like to shout out everyone that's been there, especially my vice president. She's been helping me a lot. You want to give her name? Busher Joma. All right. Thanks a lot for all, everything you did for us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I just wanted to ask you, you're both so marvelous at public speaking, mm -hmm. have you had? Mm -hmm just been practicing or did you have some some studies in public speaking or um, I mean I took AP seminar last year so I had my fair share of presentations but other than that not really uh, maybe just my language arts classes just the discussions there they helped me speak to my classmates and 
now you guys. <laughs> well, that's something that so many people are just terrified of. You did a marvelous job, and I'm sure you'll continue to do well. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Did you no, I was just okay. trying to get you out. <laughs> One more? Oh, no. Nope. <laughs> and, and you can take off if you want to. You don't have to stick around. All right, next item. Uh, acknowledgement of donations. Of course, I get to follow those two. <laughs> uh, the following donations have been offered to Dearborn Public Schools. So a donation of $384.19 has been offered to Howard Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for a classroom carpet for SEL activities. A donation of $1,000 has been offered to Dearborn High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for an iPad for IEP learning. A donation of $3,500 has been offered to Howard Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for STEAM books. A donation of $900 has been offered to Michael Berry School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for budget challenge. A donation of $2,872.50 has been offered to Howard Elementary School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for gymnatorium stage curtains. A donation of $4,979 has been offered to Dearborn High School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for registration costs for BPA State Leadership Conference. A donation of $245.70 has been offered to Woodworth Middle School by the Dearborn Education Foundation to be used for headphones. A donation of food has been offered to Dearborn High School by Dr. Tamam Mohammed and Sauzan Taraf to be used for a staff luncheon. A donation of food has been offered to Dearborn High School by Papa Roti to be used for a staff breakfast. A donation of $1,500 has been offered to Edsel Ford High School by Snap Mobile Inc. to be used for expenses for the cross country team. A donation of $300 has been offered to Salina Elementary School by White Lake Commons to be used for transportation costs for a field trip. And lastly, a donation of 100 children's winter coats and 100 mittens has been offered to Cotter School by the Arab American Chaldean Council to be distributed to GSRP pre-K students. Thank you. Thank you. Next item. Staff recognition technology. Mr. Addy's gonna come up. I believe. I'm gonna bring a few guests. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Maleko, members from the Board of Education, I'd like to share with you some accomplishments from the technology team. Thank you for allowing us the opportunity to recognize the accomplishments of our team this year for the technology department and computer services. During the current school year, our department has helped to keep staff and students connected to learning digitally. Whether it be rostering applications, assisting with questions at the help desk, fixing computers and projectors, scheduling, processing report cards, printing report cards, providing professional development, coaching, and even just answering all those questions that we might get. Our team does it all on a daily basis. And we also help to protect our staff and students from cybersecurity risks. Our team has enrolled over 15,000 Chromebooks during the past couple of years, and we've distributed those to school buildings. During this current year, we've passed a five-year technology plan and our next task is to work on a STEAM vision for all pre-K to 12 students in Dearborn that is fair and equitable and provides great resources. We're working to maintain and upgrade the current technology infrastructure and keeping up with the trends in technology integration, including artificial intelligence and how that's going to play a role in the near future, as well as working on enhancing our students' digital citizenship skills. We have some of our outstanding uh, student work that's been done with our tech coach, Amy Gwiz, and her assistant, Bob Harrison. And so if you take a look by the door, there's a QR code that's out there, as well as by the superintendent's office that displays some of the work that she's done with our students and staff and technology integration. So I'd like to share with you our accomplishments and some of our uh, outstanding members. We have Chelsea Jankoviak, Jennifer Birch. We have... Chris Kenneberg, Shane Robertson, and last but not least, Amy Wiz. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time tonight. Mm -hmm. if any trustees that want to join in the picture are more than welcome.
so. Hmm? Peer pressure. Oh, we're just waiting for everybody to line up and go back. Next item, please. Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meeting. Organizational P12 meeting, January 10th, 2023. Board, re board Report 22-77. Regular P12 meeting, January 10th, 2023. Board Report 22-78. Make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. So make a move. Support. We've got a motion by Trustee D'Ambrosio, support by Trustee Pelichkoff. Any corrections? Seeing none, can I attach a unanimous roll? All right, motion carries. 